Okay guys, I just wanted to show you guys how I dice the onion, just in case it can help someone. Uh, I try to do it as quickly as possible because I do tear up very easily. So this is how I dice up an onion. Um, and I hope this can help somebody. Okay guys, so I have my chicken here and I'm getting ready to shred it up. Um, it's nice and juicy, you can see the juices are running through. Um, and how I usually do that is with my chicken breast, I make sure I don't overcook it. You have to only cook it for several minutes on each side. Depending on how thick it is, that's what um, you have to base it off of. After I'm done cooking my chicken, I like to let it sit for at least five minutes. Um, you don't want to cut right into your chicken or your steak or any meat that you're like really cooking for that matter. You want to let it rest for a little bit so that juices can stay inside. It's also good to cover your meat as well and that'll keep it juicy. But anyways, off of that, I'm getting ready to shred my chicken up for the soup. And how I do that is just with two forks. Like this. Okay guys, and the chicken is all shredded now and ready to be added to the soup. So I have everything prepped here and ready to go to make my soup. This is chicken broth right here. I just made some out of bouillon cubes and yeah, getting ready to get started. Okay guys, so I'm getting ready to make some chicken tortilla soup and it's super easy if you haven't made it yet. Um, it's a really easy recipe to make and yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So right now I have my oil heating in my pot and I'm going to add in my diced onion and I'm gonna cook that until it gets translucent and then I'm going to add in my garlic, my minced garlic over here. That's about three to four tablespoons of minced garlic. And once the garlic cooks, then I will go ahead and add in my chicken broth and then basically everything else um, except for the cilantro and yeah so let's get started for my seasonings i'm just using chili powder cumin <clears throat> paprika and i like to add accent to a lot of my dishes because it just makes it taste even better and of course salt and pepper to taste um if you want to add in um cayenne pepper you can to give it a little heat um or whatever other seasonings you may like you can also add a jalapeno into your dish i'm not really that big on heat but um Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It all just depends. Marcus likes heat. And you guys, Chloe said hi. <laughs> You're not gonna see a lot of my face in this video because I'm trying to show you guys the pot. Just bear with me, guys. Okay, so as I said a second ago, my oil was heating in the pan. Um, I actually had turned it off for a second because I didn't want it to get too hot, but I have it on medium high heat and it's already warm. So I'm gonna go on ahead and add my onions and get started. Up. 
Okay, so I'm not adding in the garlic yet because you don't want to add your garlic in until your onions are already translucent. And then when you do add your garlic in, you only cook it for about a minute because you don't want it to burn. So, because I even do it for like 30 seconds. You just want to, when you start smelling it, start adding in your other stuff. So right here, I try to just hold it. I'm just stirring up, just stirring my onions. I'm gonna let them saute for a little bit until they start to get translucent. I'm seriously so annoying. I have to get every little speck. Look at this onion on this spoon. I'm not gonna stop until that onion is off because I'm a middle child and that's just how we do. And I'm just making enough soup for my family. This is a good amount for us. We are a family of four, but I have two little ones, so they don't eat that much yet. Um, if you have a bigger family or if you're feeding more people, obviously you will double or even triple this recipe. Now I'm getting ready to add in the garlic and let that saute for about a minute or less. Give that a stir. Once you start to smell it, That's usually good. Okay, and so now I'm getting ready to add in my chicken broth. Okay, so here's a chicken broth that I have. I'm gonna add this in. If you don't have homemade chicken broth, then you can just buy cans of uh, chicken broth, or you can make some of bouillon cubes, and that's what I always do. Cause I, like to, I like to get it the flavor that I want it to be. And I'm gonna just add that in slowly because my measuring cup will definitely spill. And then, so my heat is still on medium. And I'm just gonna give that a little stir. And now I'm gonna add in my other ingredients. I'm adding in a 14.5 ounce can of petite diced tomatoes. A can of black beans. Of course, you can do all of this homemade as well, but this is a quicker version that is still so so good I'm adding in about a cup and a half of frozen corn and I'm going ahead and give that a little stir Starting to get colorful. <laughs> Time to add the chicken in. It's already looking and smelling good because that chicken was seasoned perfectly. <laughs> now I'm adding in a tablespoon of chili powder. And I'm adding in two teaspoons of ground cumin. Three fourth teaspoons of paprika. And now you can add in pepper and salt to taste but I like to give it a stir first and then taste it and see how much salt I think I would like because like I told you guys earlier I make my own um, chicken broth out of bouillon cubes and I honestly use more than what it says because I make it more flavorful and so sometimes I don't even need to add any salt and remember you can always add more salt you can never take it away so don't just start off heavy with the salt taste it as you go I'm going to go on ahead and add in a little bit of cayenne pepper 
for a little bit of spice because I'm kind of feeling like that today. Accent makes everything better. And this is not a salt, so don't worry. You cannot add too much. Like It's not going to make your food salty. It's just... It just brings out the flavors. Hence the name, Accent. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to taste some of the broth and see if I need to add any salt. Mmm, perfect. Oh my God. I forgot to add in my lime juice, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. When, I'm, when I cut a lime or a lemon, I like to roll it a little bit to get the juices flowing, and then I cut it. And now we'll add in some lime juice. And this lime juice, oh my goodness, is so bomb in this soup. Don't leave it out. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna stir all that together. And I'm going to turn the heat up to high and I'm gonna let that boil for about five to seven minutes. And it is done. I'm just gonna go on ahead and sprinkle in some cilantro and let that cook for about a minute and then serve it. It is good to go. What did I tell you guys? This recipe is super easy to make. And usually I put it in my crock pot and I let that, um, and I let it cook all day. So I, it's a super easy meal to come home to. And it smells so good when you walk in the house. So next I'm going to just make some homemade tortilla chips. And you can either, you can buy tortilla strips at the store, but it's cheaper and better to me to just make them at home. All you do is get corn tortillas, slice them up and fry them in a little oil for a few minutes, or you can bake them. That's a healthier option. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now so we can top our soup with tortilla strips. Okay, you guys, so I'm gonna show you how I cut my tortillas into strips. It's really easy and maybe a little bit weird, but you know, it works for me. So I usually get a little stack of tortillas. For tonight, this is all we need. Chloe and Cree would not eat any of these, so it's just for me and Marcus. And you can always make some more quickly if you need to. I use my handy dandy pizza cutter to cut up my tortilla strips because it's quick and yeah. So I just slice it like this, that way, and I just go ahead and do it throughout the whole tortilla. And then you can just, I usually just cut them in half one more time. I cut the edges off first because those are always smaller. Put those to the side. And you can decide if you want a tortilla strips that big or if you want them smaller. But this size is good for me, just right down the middle. And then you just break them up and boom. And you can actually make them smaller than this. They're cooking, and they sound like chips when I'm turning them, so I'm gonna go on ahead and get them out, drain them a little bit. I always put them on a plate with a napkin to drain the excess oil. As soon as they're out of the oil and they're on the paper towel, I always sprinkle on a little salt. And that's it. So quick and easy, homemade tortilla strips. Okay, and so now for the toppings, I'm just going to add in some cheese, and it is nothing better than when you grate your own cheese from a block of cheese, but I do not have a block right now, so I'm just using what I have on hand, but oh my goodness, it's something about when you grate your own cheese, and I really love Monterey Jack cheese with this, but anything will work, a Fiesta blend of cheese, or even cheddar, whatever you like, but Monterey Jack is so, so good with it. And then top it with some more cilantro because you just can't ever have enough of that. And then with your tortilla chips. Oh, and how can I forget? Hold on. Okay, 
gotta have your dollop of sour cream. Mm. Let's put a little bit more lime juice on top. And voila. That's it.